All right, guys, welcome to part three of the 4-3 uh, playbook, defensive, free book, whatever you want to call it. It's just a breakdown of that playbook, what I'd like to do from it. I'm going to be breaking down some uh, some other formations. I'm going to put that in a separate video series. Uh, it's not going to be from the, you know, it'll just be like nickel normal breakdown, fourth, you know, whatever. But uh, today I want to talk about one of my favorite plays from uh, the 4-3 We've, we've discussed the 4-3 stack and how we utilize that as our main blitzing formation from the SAM 3 fire and let me get the audible set back to the way we had it. Uh, we had the SAM 3 fire and we had the L, uh, the Will 2 fire and uh, we also had the 2 deep from the 4-4. From the 4-3 over plus I have the cover 2 sink here but you could feel free to use any play from 4-3 over plus it doesn't really matter. Uh, some people really like the Mike SAM 3 seam it is a really good blitz but it's kind of a really glitchy blitz, and I don't know. I just don't like to run that. Uh, I feel like it's more of a crutch uh, for people who can't make good play calls because it's just, I mean, it's really a nano. I mean, it really is. It's the best. It's one of the biggest nanos I've ever seen. So, anywho, I'm, I'm, I don't run it personally, but if you, you know, if you want to run it, go ahead. You could replace the cover to sync for the Michael Cross from 4-3 under to have it in your audibles. But uh, today I want to talk about the 4-3 over formation, the 4-3 over zone blitz. Uh, this, is a, this is a play I go to when I can't figure you out. It's kind of a filler play. It's more of a, if, you, if, if there was such thing as a money play on defense, that's what this is. I mean, it's, it's not the best blitz, but it is a, it's a very good blitz for what we're doing to the blitz. And kind of what kind of coverage we're creating. So we come out in our base, we'll punch your scene, we have that. Now, when we go to the zone blitz, you see the blitz angle here of the linebacker, Burfisset, or whatever his name is. You see how it's like a, you know, it's a different blitz angle. So, and you see the left lineman. And so what I first do is I spread my line here, and you see this blitz angle does change. So what you want to do is you're going to move him over one step like so, and then re-blitz the guy straight down like this, and it creates a two-man overload on the tackle here. Now, what I like to do here is I'm going to go ahead and put Atkins in a uh, quarterback spy, put Peko in a uh, hook zone, put Manny Lawson in a deep blue zone, and you're going to use a Ray Malugi here, put him in a flat zone, but your primary... Uh, coverage is this kind of left side seam here. I, everything else is going to be covered really well. Um, curl flats will not work on the left side. Uh, right side you may have a shot at it but I mean it's still it's still a purple so let's just run the play here and show you what happens. As you see you see the uh, blitz angle has like a, a kind of a speed burst if you will. It's kind of a weird blitz and sometimes he'll come straight in sometimes he'll get picked up but the coverage uh, from this play is phenomenal. If you guys um, haven't noticed, we're dropping nine people into coverage, so everything for the most part will be sealed up. They won't be able to, you know, make a quick read or whatever. Here you see the blitz single comes right in, so uh, it's a blitz that does not work 100% of the time, but you're only sending two people, and it's, it's, pretty, I mean, it's pretty much effective 90% of the time, but, I mean, you may try it, test it out, and you may find that uh, this doesn't work as well. But you want him stacked like right here. So that's why we move the, the end over like this. If he moves back, it's not a big issue. Um, you just And you could, you could put him in whatever zone you want. You don't have to put him in the zones I suggest. Uh, you know, if, they're, if you want to man him up, you can do whatever you want with the cover. Just, you know, for the blitz to work right, you need to move that guy over and re-blitz him. And uh, sometimes that blitz will come right in. But anywho. So that's what I do with the, the zone blitz from that perspective. Uh, as far as the play, I probably use it maybe once a game, maybe twice a game. I don't use it that much. Now, if you want the blitz to come in stock, um, all you have to do is spread the line here. We're going to crash the line up. We're going to re-blitz the left screen defensive end. We're going to spy Demonte Pico. We're going to contain Carlos Dunlap. And what I like to do is I like to put this middle linebacker in a purple zone. Or not middle linebacker, this right linebacker, right of screen linebacker, Lawson here. And I'm going to put Maluga here in a flat zone so I can cover the middle of the field and then the uh, blitz will come in off the left side of the field. As you guys know, that the spy and contain concept is very effective, but it's also very uh, inconsistent. And so for that reason, uh, 
I would recommend if you don't need a spy to just leave him leaving blitzing or re-blitz them to make straight down blitz angles are pretty effective this year so I would put them straight down and you see I mean we still have our two purples outside uh, and the blitz will come in really quick and a lot of times it it's a different it's a different look I mean it's 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 four three under you see four three under here and it's basically just a flip they would think maybe we flip the will punch three seam or whatever blitz is coming off the right side or whatever but in reality we're coming off the left. Now, if you want to do this without hot routing or whatever, you can run this play. I think you can run this play stock if you just spread the line. No, you can't. Okay. I lied. Uh, if you spread the line, I think if you make it like one more adjustment. Let me just try something here. If you spread the line, you re-blitz Atkins here. Or not Atkins. Put Atkins on a contain, I'm sorry. And should come in off the left, but he slides over, so it doesn't really, doesn't really make any difference. So, I mean, you're blitzing what? What are you doing here? You're blitzing. If we do the standard blitz, you're blitzing five. Um, you know, one thing I've noticed from people is they will straight up dis. They understand that the blitz is going to get picked up, but they understand that there's a potential that you could feel the pressure. So what they'll do is they'll go ahead and put Dunlap here in his zone. They'll put Pico in like a deep blue or something, and they'll just you know they'll just run this three man pressure off the left side let it get picked up and you see how far deep he gets and so that i mean that's a concept you guys could use i've seen it from some elite players this year uh they're basically conceding the fact that it, their blitzes are not going to come in but uh essentially what they're doing is they're they're putting basically passive pressure for it to come off of a side not get in but still make you feel that pressure you only have about two to three seconds to throw if you do it like that if you want it to come in untouched though you have to do what i said earlier so that's the right side and that's universal you can do that from any play you'd have to re-blitz the linebacker of course if he's not already blitzing here but he, since he's already blitzing you can utilize like this now if we just go to uh want to bring it off the right side out of any play it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be um uh, zone blitz what you can do is, what I like to do from it, if I'm doing an out-of-zone blitz, is I'll take Burfest, uh, whatever his name is, I can't get his name right today. But I put him in a deep blue so he goes up the seam here. And I put, uh, John, I just, I don't like the spy and contain guys, I really don't. And then, I would, you got to re-blitz um, Manny Lawson here. Put Maluga in a flat zone, but understand that you're coming over to the right side of the field. And um, you should get pressure off the right side. Let's see if we can get it. Yep, there it is. So, I mean, it's it's a way to play defense. It's pretty aggressive. I mean, you're not going to have a ton of, like, shutouts with this defense. Uh, like, what I mean by that is, like, they won't be able to, like, move. Like, literally, like, they won't get past the 50. But what it does is it's a confusing defense. They don't know where the pressure is coming from because it all looks the same. And you can do it from any play. It doesn't really matter. So you can run it from zone blitz. If you have time to audible, you can go into two-man under. Uh, what I would recommend, though, is do not press out of two-man under because if you press, you base the line, sure, but don't press out of it because if you press out of it, what, ha what ends up occurring is you lose that trail coverage technique that most of them are playing. So... Uh, and then you can, like, finagle your coverage around, and you could actually have a fairly decent play coming out of two men under there uh, for a quick pressure off the west side there. So uh, it's just a concept, simple thing out of the 4-3 over. Nothing fancy. I don't think really, I even have an A-gap blitz out of this formation. Uh, I haven't really really done much. I, I wanted to experiment with this formation eventually. I just never have gotten to it. I mean, if you, like, shifted the linebacker, well, I know if you show blitz, then you can just re-blitz the safety here, spy, Atkins, and purple, and you should get a gap from the middle. And like I say, we don't, as I say that. But that gives you the angle. So, I mean, just experiment with showing blitz out of 4-3 over if you want to look for an a gap. I haven't found much in the way of an a gap that I can make it look like all of my other plays. Um... So I mean, I mean that's that's the thing. I mean, I want if I'm running an A gap, I want it to look exactly identical to every other play. Now let's try this here. Uh, if we move Gene Likens over one step, we blitz him like this, and then zone the right side line, and we may get it. Yep. So that's something you can do for passive pressure if you want to try it, something like that where it comes up the middle. Uh, uh, it's probably very inconsistent. So. But anywho, that's basically what I do out of this formation. Um, 
if you go to the Blitz Audible down, you see it's uh, this kind of what I don't even know what this play is, but what it what it essentially is, it's our Blitz setup. It's a Cover Zero version of it, so we can just set up our standard Blitz here and uh, zone Malaluga here, zone Newman. Man, these guys up on the outside, guys. That's what I like to do. Is man the safeties up on the outside guys? Put the outside guys in purple or uh, yellow zones and cover the inside streaks myself. And you see. Uh, this is actually a really effective coverage, uh, understanding the fact that they're only going to have, you know, a split second to make a decision. So that's the that's the concept of the defense. If you guys haven't picked that up already, and uh, what you're mainly going to be using this formation for is a, essentially a change up to your um, to your standard pitches. And I'm going to show you a, I want to show you something that I just learned recently. Uh, it's not from 4-3 over. I would like to let me just. Oh, I should have rehearsed this. Um, let me let me talk a little bit about four three over in in its entirety and what you can do with this formation, uh, just by simply you know, calling any play. Uh, what I want to talk about here is some situational calls. Um, I spent a lot of time talking about certain plays and and how to utilize those as a scheme, and I haven't talked a whole lot about situational play calls, what to do in this type of a situation. With, you know what I mean? So. Um, let me just spend some time on that right now. You see this fourth over formation. You have this fire zone too. You have the fireman. You have this man quarter. I mean, you have a ton of decent concepts out of this. This cover three buzz is uh, cover three buzz is a really good play if you guys haven't known that already. And you could create that play uh, from other formations. But anyway, I want to talk about CB dog zone now. What CB dog zone does? Is this is by far the best run defense that I have found so far this year. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call a standard run. I don't even know where I'm running. But you see, I'm running down the middle here. So I call CB Dog Zone. I do nothing to the play. I just run it like this. And literally, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could run anything. I mean, this, this works against, if you guys know Ryan Dykes, uh, this works against Jed Heavy. This works against uh, I form tackle over. The, the, I mean, this is if I need if I am feeling like I can't stop the run, I immediately go to this uh, formation and it's locked up. Off tackle does not occur in this uh, in this formation because what happens is the corners are coming crashing down like so. So they're taking up the the lead blocker. The linebackers are flaring to the outside to snap the ball. So what's going to occur here is you know they're going to Basically, they're going to flare out like so and force the running back to cut it back inside where we have five guys versus their four or three guys, depending on if they pull alignment or not. So that's basically the concept here. Now, if you see this, if you see what I see here, Geno Atkins is on the, uh, the quote-unquote blitz angle, the A-gap blitz angle. So let me, just, let me just see if I can get... Um, let me just see what I get here. If I take and show the blitz here. So I need to show the blitz. Put. So let's just see what we get. And there's your A-gap. So if you want an A-gap, what I will suggest you do is you got to come out in CB Dog Zone, baseline, show blitz. You want to re-blitz the safety here. And then you really need to get quick with your setups because you're going to be putting Pico on a spy. I would put Johnson on a deep blue. I would re-deep blue Nelson so he covers the middle. And I'd put these guys out here on deep blue. So basically, essentially, you have a cover four um, type of a look here. I would obviously use the middle linebacker and jump the right side seams because that's what's going to be open here. Uh, but it's a, it's a simple three-man A-gap out of 4-3 over. So if you guys needed that, that's what I found for you. Now, if you want to bring pressure out of the CB Dog zone, that is a possibility. I've been working on some, some different types of looks here. And what I've found is uh, if you go ahead and just run this play like so, uh, you'll get pressure off the edge. You see he comes in there, uh, but it's really delayed. I mean, you probably have – I mean, it's 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 really deceptive, though. I mean, I have honestly gotten a couple sacks of this play because of its deception. If you guys uh, think about it, what, what we're essentially doing here is we're bringing pressure from someone they never really think is going to bring pressure. So what I would do is I would take the uh, safety on that side, man him up. I would man up the side that I was blitzing from and zone the opposite. So you see here, I could put Hall in any zone I want. So I, I choose to put him in a hook zone, and I take um, Lawson here and put him in another hook zone, like he'd be my user defender or whatever. 
or I could get him like over here like this way and put him in a flat but just for the video purposes I'm gonna put him in a, a yellow zone and I get on uh, if I can get on him here Maluga put him in a flat zone but know the triangle is my responsibility here I mean this is a pretty effective blitz to be honest because look I mean it's it's just deceptive because there's no linebacker initially coming so they think oh I got time I got time and you're there so I mean just looking for a little mix in play from 4-3 over that's what this is if you want to bring double sided pressure just run the play stock but spread line crash them up and reboots the end here and you'll see they come right off the edge there together so um, a pretty I, I mean I might actually start using this some I mean it's really effective concept from this formation uh, the cover to sync uh, this formation is the same as all the others you see we have that a gap blitzing if you would if you would just take a loss down and hold him here um, you know you could also run an a gap like this just hold him right here don't move him don't do anything else just hold him you can come right up the a gap every time um, because of the way the a gap angle works this year you have to have him like right here. He can't be off. I don't think he can be. Let me just try. If we have him where he normally is, I don't think it will work. Yeah, because for what they they pick up like priority or whatever, and they the lineman lineman's assignments go based off of priority. So that's why we move him down like right over him like this, so the guard will pick up him, and that leaves the a gap angle coming in. So that's. It, it's some more a gap if you're looking for it. Uh, cover three. I like these. I love these blitz angles from cover three. If I it was up to me, I'm just gonna re blitz Dunlap down here. And what I've been doing is taking Crocker, putting him in a deep blue, putting Lawson in a purple zone, putting Howard in a purple zone if I can get to him. Put Maluga in a flat. And essentially, I have a cover four. I'm watching the middle of the field, and I have uh, four down linemen coming on some crazy weird blitz angles. Uh, for a quick block shed sack. So you see the concept. This is a little longer video because I want to talk about some other stuff towards the end. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the fourth over portion of it. Now we're going to get into some other stuff real quick before I get out of here. Uh, I think I broke down the 4-3 under formation as my first video in this uh, in this series. So I want to touch on uh, some stuff I've been, uh, been doing recently out of 4-3 under. Uh, and you guys saw in the beginning maybe the audibles, my under Sam Sh or Mike Sam Crash and um, Will Punch 3C, and those are in my audibles. I've been doing some newer, uh, some newer stuff out of it. I'm going to talk about this play. This is one of the best plays in the game. Um, I've been running it for a while, but I, I've never really thought it was that great of an idea. But it, I've been thinking about it recently, and it really is. Under Sam Shark, all you got to do is base the line press like we always do out of this formation. Now you spread your line. What you're going to do is you're going to take Pico and you're going to re-blitz him and you're going to re-blitz Dunlap here. And then you're going to take Maluga and put him in a flat zone. Essentially what you're doing is you're forcing the, the um, your, your best, you're covering the right side of the field and you're blitzing from the right side of the field the best. What I mean by that is your best coverage on this play is to the right side of the field. But you're blitzing from that side of the field, so they're never going to suspect that you have four guys going to the right side of the field, essentially. Well, actually five guys, because he's going to the middle, but he's like shading to the right here. So you have five out of your seven. Yeah, five out of your or six out of your eight in coverage going to the right side of the field where you're blitzing from. So uh, this blitz is not going to come in right away. But what it does is it forces them to like think about it because it's a it's like the most effective blitz that's not a blitz I mean if that makes any sense at all and you could just re-blitz Pico you don't have to re-blitz John or Dunlap uh, that's just something I do because sometimes the blitz will come in if I do that but as you see the stunt from Dunlap can kind of do some damage uh, these angles on the line are unique I like to call this play probably uh, I don't even know how, I don't really call it much, but when I do call it, I really usually have some good results. This zone from Nelson is deadly, uh, so you may look out for it. Maluga in that user uh, type of scenario. Here, and you can like jump the drag, and I mean, it's pretty good blitz, and it's a pretty good play. And as always, we can run our universal pressure out of it, and take Johnson here and you could you could leave uh, Maluga blitzing here and what you could do is you could just zone Johnson and what will happen is Maluga should come free and he didn't of course what did I do wrong huh let me take a look at that maybe I forgot to let 
Yeah. Nope, it won't work. It's too long of a blitz. So you have to go ahead and leave him down. I thought you could, um... I thought you could, um... What's it called? Leave, uh... But essentially what you could do is you could put him in a purple, him in a flat, use him in the middle of the field, and have right side pressure coming off. So, uh, that's pretty good. So we can do it like that. What we're going to do, if you want to bring pressure out of this, is just go ahead and uh, standard setup and just contain spy here on the right or the left side here and uh, make put Burfacet or whatever that's linebacker in a purple zone, Malug in a flat zone. Now user, you're using the middle of the field here and you're coming right off the right side. So there's that. If you uh, baseline show blitz out of this real quick, you get your A gap set up here from Dunlap and Mal. Uh, you're, you don't have to do anything to it. What I would do to the play though, if it was me, I would read deep blue, uh, Berfessa and Crocker, and put Atkins in a hook zone. And um, you really don't have to use anyone on this play. If you want to use someone, put Berfessa in a flat zone and use in the middle of the field. But there's another A gap blitz out of 4-3 uh, under. So. Uh, so there's that play. Um, if they're running off tackle, this is a really good run defense as well because of the lineman's angles. Um, they can play the run really well, so just know that. Real quick, um, before I leave, I want to touch on Slit Crash Left and Sam Blitz 2. I think they're both the same exact play, really. Uh, essentially, they're both the same play. So... All you're going to do is you're going to baseline press, you're going to spread line crash up, and you're going to re-blitz the right of screen end. And you want to take these corners, you want to move them inside, maybe like a hair, and back them up just a wee bit. And now you'll be able to play a cover one style of a defense with no issues. I use the safety on the, or well, you don't have to use the safety. You can just go ahead and use them out, Just know your assignment, know where you got to be at, and cover it. And you should be good there. It's really quick pressure, and I think I saw somebody. I mean, it's the same thing for Sam Blitz too. If you guys are looking for a cover two scheme or a cover two type of look, uh, you can always do that from the Sam Blitz two out of four three under. Um, same exact setup. And then I would put them in yellows. I don't think the flats play very good. So I put them in yellows, create basically cover to sink, bring pressure off the right side of the field. So hopefully you guys are understanding, learning some stuff in this uh, this guide. Uh, I know a co I know I got some positive feedback in the first video. So hopefully you guys are uh, learning some stuff, getting some knowledge in. Um, this is one of the best. I think this is one of the best defenses in the game this year. Um, May just maybe be maybe me being cocky, uh, but I feel like my defense can really kind of contend um, with some people, especially because now um, that I have all this new stuff that I've been doing from the four four, um, it it basically just changed the game for me. I'm gonna show you also how to get the over plus blitz from four four, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in the next video. So stay tuned in the next video if you guys want to see that. Um, the over plus blitz, let me just talk about it real quick because I, while well, I have time, um, if you guys haven't noticed, I've been kind of, I haven't posted as many videos lately, I've uh, been really swamped with time and just, oh man, I've been so tired and baseball season and everything, it's just a big, big kind of a job. So, the over plus blitz, essentially your, sh your linemen are crashing in here and you need to move this guy over re-blitzing like this. Because he wants to, they want the center to pick up the middle linebacker. So essentially, you're um, you're really uh, killing yourself though defensively if you use this a lot. Because what will happen is, yeah, you may get one or two sacks, but eventually they'll pick up on it, and they'll like pinch their line out of play action or do something weird. And now you only have what five in coverage. And you're only getting, you won't even get anyone free if they do that. So, what we're doing here is, you see how um, we reblitz Dunlap. The reason we reblitz Dunlap is because he was already, he was um, in a zone. But 
The purpose of him blitzing is to pick up the guard. And the purpose of the linebacker blitzing is to pick up the tackle. Essentially what will occur now is there will be no one left to block Geno Atkins when he comes up the A-gap. Because, because of the slide over. The slide over is the key to the blitz. Um, because it makes the center, for whatever reason, it glitches the center into uh, taking on Malaluga here. So real quick, let me just show you the blitz. Did something wrong. Oh, uh, you have to use her. That's right. Um, I forgot about that. Um, and that's why it's such a glitchy play. You have to use her, the, the safety, for it to work. And essentially, uh, that really limits your skill. Because I like to use her the middle linebacker, as everyone knows. So... They are, they're going to know this blitz is coming. If you know it's coming, you can stop it. It's when you don't know it's coming when it's the most effective. But there you see it comes in right there nice and clean. Um, and let me just show you a little preview. So we're going to 4-4 four, four here. And I'm not actually going to show you the blitz, but I'm going to talk. Maybe you guys can figure it out. Um, you see here. You see these guys on the uh, left side are on that blitz angle. So... All we have to do now is maybe use our one guy on the right side of the field. Essentially, we've created the same concept from another formation. So, I think you have to use your... The only issue, like I say, the only issue with this play is the fact that you have to use your a certain player. So, I mean, that's what kills this play. Because if, if for some, one reason or another it doesn't work, and you're basically user, I mean, you're really screwed. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, it's just the way it, way cookie crumbles. So, here's the over plus blitz, and they, I think you see how that thing on that. So, you can come, if you shift them to the right, it's cleaner. Um,. So essentially we can do the same thing for 4-4 four, four because of the formation. It's the same concept, if you guys didn't pick up on that already. It's the same concept, it's just from another, it's, it's just from a different lineman set. So, but hopefully you guys can figure it out for me um, on the 4-4. Four, four. If you guys figure it out, post in the comment section. Uh, but in the next video I'll show you how I figured uh, a way to get the blitz from the 4-4. Um, I may actually have to relearn it because it's been a while since I've got it. Or it's been a while since I've played the game. Uh, I've just been so freaking swamped with practices and all sorts of stuff going on with my <laughs> in my life these days. But I mean, it's just all this. I mean, you can do this from 4-3 stack as well. You see the same. It's the same concept. The same principle applies. All you're gonna do is this, and then you're gonna like put Maluga here on a contain. Hopefully, they if they pick him up, you're good. So, I mean, it, it's essentially the same concept. And if they don't, you're coming right through with another. I mean, it's it's just an overload principle. I mean, you're bringing six at five. I wonder, you know, it's just the principle though is you're getting free. The reason this blitz is so good is because you're getting free a dude that's literally right next to the center. So he's just fume. But if you guys are good at reading defenses and you can kind of tell when they're shifting and whatever, this blitz is not an issue or a problem in the game. If you guys need to look, go to the channel and check out the blitz pickup guide. Or go to Masta Chappie's channel. Uh, it's YouTube.com. Just search Masta Chappie. Click on his little channel link and go over there. He has a video up on how to stop this blitz. So, uh, But that's not what I really originally wanted to talk about. But I got off topic, of course. Uh, like I say, it's going to be a little longer video. Um, but what I wanted to show you guys was another play from 4-3-under, I think, that I've been using a lot. Maybe it wasn't from 4-3-under. I already showed you guys the coverage from Michael Cross. That's probably my principal defense. If you can beat that defense, you're, you're doing something right offensively because it's really tough to beat. Um... Might have been from 4-3. I showed you the CB Dog zone. I showed you zone blitz. I showed you the, the concept of cover three buzz. Um, hmm. Well, since I have limited time right now, I'm going to go ahead and put over plus up uh, right after this video.
So, hopefully you guys can catch this video and then you can see the next one as we come back. I'm not even going to change the teams or the thing. I'm just going to close her out here. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like the 4-3 over formation, you like the free 4-3 uh, the free four three playbook guide, go ahead and subscribe. If, you have a, if you've already subscribed and you like what you're seeing from the channel, go ahead and give us a like below. Uh, what the like basically does, it gives us opportunities to grow the channel. It gives us opportunities for people other, people other than you to see what we're doing here. Uh, helps them grow in Madden. Uh, trust me, guys, these setups are not like the world. Uh, they're not like the next big thing. All they are are very simple concepts that have been used all year. Um, but when you become great, I'm going to be talking about that in a little bit in the next video. Uh, when you become great defensively is when you can use these concepts and apply them to your own uh, game, uh, your own game plan and your own uh, scheme. Uh, I don't want you... I mean, you could run this scheme word for word, but does it really benefit you to do that? Yeah, in the short term it does. In the long run, you're going to be needing to make it your own schemes. You're going to be needing to make it your own guy or your own, like, your own kind of concepts. But uh, this is designed to help you start. It's designed to help people who don't know simple concepts of the game or, or maybe new to the game. So hopefully it helps. Hopefully it, it, is, uh, it works for the purpose it was designed for. Hopefully you guys appreciate the video. Like I said, I'll uh, show your support below. If you guys find that 4-4 blitz for me, uh, post it below. It's, uh, I, would re I would recommend you guys starting in the 4-4 formation, not just the 2-D, because uh, you do need a certain type of an angle to do it. And that comes not just for, I don't think it even comes from the 2-D. You may need another audible, but I will show it to you when I break down that formation. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.